Hi guys, it's Sebastian Boyer, the approved guy, and I have some uh, updates for everyone on the EIDL or the Economic Industry Disaster Loan and Grant uh, 2021 version 2.0. Um, so please uh, get ready. I'm about to provide you with all the information you need to know about the grant and how to get it, how to apply and how to get approved. So uh, first of all, who, you know, who can apply and who can qualify uh, the grant itself uh, was supposed to be open uh, January 17th, which was yesterday, Sunday. Um, but at, as of now, the portal has still not opened for the EIDL to be uh, applied for. So even if you got the grant last year in the first round, you're going to be able to apply again to get the difference if you did not get the full $10,000 as soon as the portal opens. So uh, originally, the, the original grant was supposed to be $10,000 but funds ran low. And so they started issuing $1,000 per employee. So a lot of folks only got 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 9,000. Bottom line is if you didn't get the full 10,000, you're gonna be able to apply to get the difference this time around. Now you gotta keep in mind that this grant is just that, it's a grant, it's not a loan. Um, and while you're applying for the grant, you can also apply for the loan, but you don't have to accept the loan. You know, so the loan is actually a really great loan. It's at 3.75% interest up to 30 years. And you do have to keep track of your spending and how you use that money. But, um, but you don't have to accept the loan, even if you get approved for the grant. Um, something, you know, noteworthy about this grant is that it is uh, not considered taxable income. So you can get approved for the grant and you do not, uh, you will not be taxed on this grant. So this is a great opportunity if you didn't get the 10,000 to apply to get the full 10,000 now, or if you only got a partial amount to get the difference this time around. Now, as you know, the PPP loan or the Paycheck Protection Program loan is also now available and there, there will be no conflict between you getting the grant or EIDL loan or EIDL grant uh, as well and, and getting the PPP loan. So you can actually apply and get approved for both. Um, by the way, if you do want to apply for the PPP loan, I'll be putting out another video on this as well, going deeper into the PVP loan. Uh, but you can go ahead and apply with my preferred lender here, uh, which is going to be at uh, orangefi.us. That's orange like the fruit, fi, fi, dot us forward slash PPP. And you'll be able to begin registering and then applying with our preferred SBA lender. So uh, if you want to do that, go ahead and do that. Before I continue, I do want to state a warning against scams and fraud. Uh, last time around with the PPP and EIDL, there was a lot of people out there advertising to get people all types of money for all types of commissions. You know, I heard people literally telling, guaranteeing people $100,000 paycheck protection loans, you know, for 50% commission. And guys, that's not legal. Um, first of all, this, this money is, um, is, is uh, money for a catastrophe. You know, this is money because of the pandemic of COVID that the government is um, putting back into the market. This is not the time for us to be, um, you know, taking advantage of each other, um, stealing, lying, and cheating. This is, this is the time for us to help each other and bless each other. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of people got duped into, you know, taking, uh, working with folks that, you know, potentially put fraud, fraudulent information on these applications. You know, if you were making $100,000 a year and you're doing payrolls only, let's say 50,000, um, there's no way you could have gotten an, a paycheck protection loan for 100,000 because the loan was only two and a half months worth of payroll. And unfortunately, I talked to people who it was too late. They already went and did that with someone else and unfortunately paid all kinds of crazy commissions. And, you know, I just don't know what to say, except, you know, it's going to come back to bite them in the butt and uh, people are going to have to face penalties. Uh, including potential jail time for fraud and scams. So stay away from fraud, stay away from scams, be honest, just put the right in, the factual information on these applications. If you get it, that's awesome, that's great. If you don't get it, you know, you don't get it. What, what, what can I say? Do the right thing, okay? If it sounds too good to be true, most likely it is. It's not always the case, but you know, in, in this case, don't, don't take the chance, okay? Beware of scams and frauds. Okay, moving on, let's get into the EIDL. Um, so small business owners, independent contractors, self-employed individuals are really going to have the opportunity to get this. Even if you have a side hustle, legal side hustle, you can qualify. Uh, so, you know, pretty much this time around, 
they're really trying to set it up so more people who really need this uh, grant and loan can get it. Uh, there are basically four criteria that you have to meet to qualify, okay? Uh, the first one is you have to have less than 300 employees. That's number one. So a lot of folks can easily determine that. Number two, your business has to have started before January 31st, 2020. So that's a big question that I'm getting as I'm fielding calls for people uh, asking about the EIDL. They're, they're asking about, you know, well, I started my business in the middle of 2020. Can I qualify? And unfortunately, the answer is no. Um, so you would have had to start your business uh, January before January 31st, 2020. Um, number three, you must also be able to show a 30% loss in revenue in any eight week period between March 2nd, 2020 and December 31st, 2021. Uh, kind of doesn't make sense since we're at the beginning of 2021, but basically up until now, up in, and then I guess they're probably planning on extending this out further, but um, basically between March 2nd, 2020 and where we are now, if you're gonna apply now, any eight week period, you have to be able to show a 30% loss, okay? Number four, your business address must be located in a low income community or tract, okay? This is measured two different ways, either based on the poverty level of your tract, which is uh, the poverty level uh, of your tract has to be 20% or more than your state poverty level. So you can find this information on the tract um, website from the government, which is uh, the FFIEC website. I'm going to put a link in the web in this YouTube video description with that information. Um, and then for the state, you can verify that on the census website. Uh, basically, you'll compare that and see if you are at 20 percent or more of the of the state property level based on your tract, then you can qualify. Um, so again, check the description for the link. The second way is based on the median household income, again, based on your tract. Um, guys, basically the your tract is, the government has your city broken down into tracts. So it's a smaller area of, of, of coverage uh, that is, is kind of narrowed down in the census to determine various um, economic levels and, 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 and data from the census. So you can look at that, you can look that up again. I'll put the link in the description. Um, but that's what the tract is. It's just a, a more narrow area. Your city is a lot bigger. There could be a hundred tracks in one city. So uh, you'll see that on that link. Um, now, as far as the median household income, it cannot be more than 80% than the median household income of your state. So again, you can you know check the links for your for the census tract income data and the census city or state data. I'm going to put that in the description. Now, as far as applying for the EIDL. This is only a, a loan that can be applied through through the SBA website. That's sba.gov. I'm going to put the actual link specifically to the EIDL program in the description. But this is not a loan application that you go through a bank or a lender, and therefore you should not be, um, you know, paying a third party, you know, a percentage of fees for this loan. Now, if you have an attorney or a CPA or somebody helping you with documents, those are professionals that provide services and that's fair. They charge you for their fees, for their time, for their work, but it should not be a percentage based on the results of you getting approved for this loan. I hope, I hope that's clear uh, or for this grant or for the PPP for that matter. All right, guys. So um, ultimately um, check the description for those links. Um, you'll see other, other links as well for startup cred, business credit 101, Orange Five funding, debt elimination, um, learning about be, being your own, being your own bank with infinite banking, uh, and you can always schedule a, a free consultation with me or reach out to me anytime. Okay, I hope this video is helpful. It blesses you. Please like the video. It tells uh, YouTube that I'm doing a good job. Please, please subscribe to my channel. Click the bell to receive a notification about future videos. Again, I'm going to be releasing the PPP one coming up soon. And, uh, you know, thank you for listening. Thanks for uh, participating. I, again, hope that this truly blesses you. God bless you. Peace and love. Sebastian Boyer, the approved guy, signing out.